Hello, this is the Adam Sin, and today we are going to do a painting from Paul Cezanne, and we are going to do this beautiful mountain um, Saint Victor. Um, I will have the traceable for you just to make it easy, but you can um, kind of follow the way I'm tracing it um, if you want to try first by yourself. But separate your page on four rectangles. So split it horizontally halfway and vertically halfway and start adding elements um, accordingly to where they are placed and what line they're crossing or under. And it's super easy because we have a mountain that it's kind of like triangles um, overlapping. Then we have the buildings that are rectangles the roofs are triangles and or the buildings are trapezoids then we have the fields we have the uh, bridge far away where the train is passing and um, everything else is pretty simple so the trees are circles or ovals and obviously we are going to break those not make them absolutely even like perfect ovals and circles so the first thing I'm going to do is do outlining with my um, dark blue and some of the areas I will use wet on wet and some of the areas I will use dry on wet and when you do me wet on wet it is pretty much you want to make the surface wet in the area that you want the color to kind of go in and burst. This is the one I did earlier. Um, the video didn't turn out very well, so I'm doing it again and it will be slightly different, but um, that's pretty much it. So from time to time I'm going to be quiet so you guys can observe. Um, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I will have that traceable available for you on my Facebook page, absolutely free for you guys to um, save it, print it, and trace it onto your paper. And I will be quiet now, but I will from time to time tune in if there is any dramatic change. I will absolutely encur encourage you to try to paint a few of his paintings. It will be a really good transition if you have been doing um, Impressionism. So his post-Impressionism, he was loved by Monet and Picasso. He is the beginning of a new era and a new style. So his paintings are very simplistic um, and you're going to enjoy those. I hope you do. Uh, please let me know what do you think. I will try to paint a few of his watercolor paintings. He does have those. And I will do a few of um, his um, oil paintings, either in acrylics on water or watercolor. But uh, if you want me to do certain paintings of his, please let me know. I would not mind to um, do something that you guys want. Um, 
I would actually love to. And I will be quiet for a little bit. So we're going from darker colors uh, to much lighter colors and um, just observe. From time to time, I am changing the brush stroke direction depending on the object that I'm working on. So if it's fields, I might go horizontal or um, on an angle. If it's the mountains, um, just observe what I'm doing depending on the area of the mountain. And obviously if it's uh, bushes, grass, um, things like that, also the brush stroke and direction will change so that is going to be um, a little bit helpful if you do that because immediately you're going to start creating the object or the illusion of the object So he has a brilliant way of creating mountains um, and I really love what he does. Um, so I hope you do too. Um, check his other paintings. Um, I think I have a few of his paintings on my channel, but go to Wikipedia or anywhere that has his paintings and just observe um, he, the way he has paint and how he has simplifies things uh, and it's very different than everything before him. So you're going to see me when I find a color that can go around, I will go to different areas. Um, so what I did with the first roof of the closest house to us, and then I went around and added that color on all the places that color was existing. So it's not uh, me concentrating on what, one area until it's done, but I'm kind of moving around um, and adding 
uh, brush strokes and elements all around the painting so the whole painting is brought in together to the end. Now when we're working with watercolor, we want certain areas to dry a little bit a little bit before we add another layer or different color that's overlapping. So that's the only um, thing that you want to watch not to muddy your colors and give a little bit of chance to certain colors to get absorbed by the paper and dry up and before you add another color. But the mountain already looks like it's complete um, and we are not quite done yet so it's really cool how he is um, achieving this with very very little. And you're going to see me from time to time adding a color and then taking that color away almost completely. Um, and that's just something I do. You don't have to do that. You can leave areas um, much just very transparent, super light. But I like to add a color and then pick it up. Um, it's just some style that or some sort of a technique that um, I do when I do watercolor. And this is our foreground, so it's close to us, so I'm adding the bush strokes. Uh, it looks like a field maybe, um, or trees. I think it's a field. I'm not quite sure on this one, but we're just going to leave every observer to their imagination. I love the brightness of the colors, I love the way he created all the elements, it is really neat. Uh, for the sky, I'm using wet on wet and then I will be dropping um, two to three colors, so I'm dropping two different blues and also purple. So I'm not putting a lot of water. It's wet um, enough for the color to start moving but it's not moving too fast and then I will have the chance to kind of move the color uh, the way I want it. So we're going to add another uh, layer of shadows. And that's what I'm talking about, the way I put colors and then I lift them. Um, sometimes it just helps me um, create the highlights but you can just leave those area much much lighter you don't have to do what I'm doing
our shadows really make everything pop. That's how important our shadows are. So simple, so beautiful, very easy way to start doing um, anything that is outside paintings. You can use a lot of those techniques when you go and uh, do a plain air painting. Uh, but pretty much that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to get notifications for my future videos. And I will see you soon and happy painting. Thanks for watching. Bye.